Hi everyone, my name's Chris and today I'm taking a look at Samyang's new 100mm f2.8 macro lens. It's a traditional 100mm macro lens designed to work on full frame or APS-C cameras and it costs around £370 or about $550 US dollars. 100mm macros have always been very handy as they serve a dual role. Firstly, they're designed to get you extremely close to your subject, much closer than normal lenses, which is a lot of fun. And secondly, their wide maximum aperture of f2.8 combines with a short telephoto focal length to make a very nice portrait lens. Now, Samyang have a reputation for making very sharp, manual focus lenses. This lens does not have autofocus and you have to set the aperture manually too. Having to manually focus can put some people off. However, 90% of the time when you're doing macro photography, you'll need your camera set up on a tripod anyway, using live view with the lens's apertures topped down. So you'll tend to be manually focusing anyway. It really isn't much of a problem if you're using live view. Let's take a look at its build quality. The lens is long and thin, with lots of focusing information on the barrel, and it looks really quite classy, in my opinion. It's made of good quality plastics, based on a metal lens mount, and it feels weighty and quite solid. The lens's main feature is the manual focus ring. It turns extremely smoothly and precisely, with hard stops at either end, and it's very well damped indeed, being a pleasure to use. At the bottom of the lens is the aperture ring. It clicks very positively every half stop from f2.8 down to f22, and then there's one final click down to f32. As you can see here, the lens has nine aperture blades. That gives you very smooth bokeh when the aperture is topped down, which is very important for a macro lens. Let's see that in action. Here's a picture taken with the aperture wide open at f2.8. Here's the same picture at f5.6 and again at f11. You can see that the out of focus highlights remain nice and round. And here's the same scene stopped down to f32. The bokeh remains smooth, even at this tiny aperture. The lens comes with quite a deep hood which fits securely to the front, as well as the usual pouch bag that Samyang supply. Overall, it's designed and built very solidly indeed, with the focus ring being particularly nice to use. Let's take a look at image quality then. We'll start by testing on a full frame camera, a 20 megapixel Canon 6D. At f2.8, the lens is sharp and contrasty in the middle of the image, and it seems to have slightly warm colours. The corners of the image are a touch softer, but still good, and we are not seeing any colour fringing. Stop the aperture down to f4 and the corners become brighter and a little sharper. Stop down to f5.6 and the corners become fantastically sharp, and the resolution and contrast in the middle of the image are also beyond reproach. So, when mounted to a full frame camera, we see some nice, sharp results at normal focus distances. Let's see how the lens performs on an APS-C camera, in this case, an 18 megapixel Canon 60D. Straight from f2.8, we continue to see fantastic picture quality in the middle of the image, with very good contrast. The corners of the image are noticeably softer, but still very usable, and we are still not seeing any chromatic aberration, which is normally much more noticeable on APS-C. The corners are a bit sharper at f4, and very sharp from f5.6. Back in the middle, the resolution remains fantastic. So, overall, the APS-C camera's sensor presents a greater challenge to this lens, but it's still nice and sharp, especially when the aperture is topped down. Let's take a look at distortion and vignetting on a full-frame camera. The lens shows a negligible level of pincushion distortion, you'll never notice it in real-life shooting. At f2.8 we get noticeable darkness in the corners. Stop the lens down to f4 to push that vignetting back, and at f5.6, we get even illumination across the image frame. A pretty good performance overall. Now, let's take a look at the all-important close-up image quality. 
Here's a macro picture at f2.8. You can see the razor-thin depth of field here. The area in focus is nice and sharp, and also we're not seeing too much longitudinal chromatic aberration here, with only a hint of green and pink in the background and foreground respectively. Stop the aperture down to f4 for awesome sharpness. The image remains this sharp down to f22, and now you can see the greatly increased depth of field. f32 is noticeably soft due to the effect of diffraction, and that's normal for most camera lenses. So overall, in terms of close-up picture quality, this macro lens is a very good performer. Now let's see how well it works against bright lights. Macro lenses normally have problems shooting against bright light, as they're not really designed to do that. We do see a loss of contrast, as well as flaring. Make sure you use the lens hood if you're shooting outside. Finally, bokeh. The lens, as we've already seen, can give you very nice out-of-focus backgrounds. The quality of this lens's bokeh is mostly nice and smooth, although sometimes highlights can be a little intrusive. Overall, the Samyang 100mm f2.8 macro turns in a very respectable performance indeed in all my tests, except for working against bright lights, but macro lenses never shine in that department. It's nice and sharp, with excellent close-up image quality, no chromatic aberration, and nice bokeh when the aperture is open or stopped down. The manual focus ring is very smooth to work with, making this a potentially useful lens for video work, if you have a tripod. If you're happy manually focusing, and you really need to with macro photography anyway, then this lens will return you some rewarding and striking pictures, and it comes recommended.